Hey everybody and welcome back to the Average Woman Podcast. I am that lady, Miss Nicole, coming at you today with some more positivity and good vibes to assist you in your journey through this week and the months to come. So, um, something that I want to talk to you about, I made a video on this previously a long time ago. So today I want to talk to you about keeping your house in order. Now, a lot of us do not have homemaking skills, and that is something that really has to be corrected really quick, okay? So being a homemaker is part of being a woman because as the lady of the house, the house is really considered your responsibility. You know what I'm saying? So you have to, you got to step your game up and be present in your house at all times. You can't just let things go untidy and don't have any systems in your house to keep your house in order. Because, listen, that stuff matters to a man. The quickest way to get a man to leave you alone is to have a filthy, nasty behind house. Because, listen, don't no man like no nasty woman. They might they might act like they do, but they're not going to wife no filthy woman. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So we're going to talk about that. We're going we, to we just talking about keeping the house clean today. So this might be a long video, short video. We're just going to let the spirit go and do what it do. So now the first thing that I wanted you that you that you want to know is that in every room in your house, it should be a trash can. Every room. OK, if you have children, you need to have a trash can in every room in your house because we make trash. Okay, we make trash and we make clutter and some things have to be thrown out and when we need to throw stuff away, we need some place to put it and every room in your house just needs a trash can. That's the first thing that you can do to establish some type of cleaning uh, environment in your home is to just make sure you got trash cans for people to put trash in. Okay, the second thing that you need to do and we're going to go bring it down by the rooms. Okay, but that keeping a trash can in every room in the house is just basically applies to everywhere okay so working our way from in into your house I'm walking into your house the first thing that people notice when they come into your house is the smell okay so you always want to make sure you got some smell good in your house now I like to have some incense I like a little air for breeze and all kind of things. I love smell good in my house. Candles are all right, but you need some some stuff to just knock a, knock the funk out the room immediately. In in all rooms, wherever people dwell, it, they, it's only ninety seven cents, so it's not really expensive. So you definitely want to make sure that you got some cans of air freshener in your house to make sure that your house smell good. Come on, ladies. So. Make sure you got some Febreze because Febreze is a necessity because it eliminates odors that linger. So if you have um, in your bathroom, you got those rugs in your bathroom, spray them down. Your kids' room, you know, if you don't take the comforters regularly to the, to the laundromat or wash them, spray that down. You want your house to be pleasant. Open your windows in your house to allow some breeze to come in. Now, if you don't live in a safe neighborhood, I do not recommend that. You know, by all means, you definitely want to be safe. But it's nothing wrong when you're home for a little bit of time. Allow your house to air out. Every spring, every spring, every spring, we should be cleaning our house. Spring cleaning. That's what that's what that is. Spring cleaning. But really, I mean, like a deep clean stuff that you don't never change and everything you do in the springtime because it's a new year. You know what I'm saying? So. You want to make sure you keep your house dust and clutter free. If you got two of something and one is broken, if it doesn't, if it's not serving a purpose, get rid of it. Clutter is 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 problems. Okay, clutter is problems. So declutter your house. You don't need stuff. It just piles of stuff. If it doesn't serve a purpose, get rid of it. Okay, or either find some place to put it and make it look like something. And we'll be right back after these messages. All right, so y'all, welcome back, welcome back. And we are talking about keeping your house clean now. The quickest way, the second, well, one of the ways, one of the quickest ways to run a man off is to have a filthy house, y'all. 
I mean, you got as a woman, you got to keep your house clean. So that's what we talk about today. So um, we are we we talking about making sure your house smells good. That was the last part. So we got to make sure the house smells good. Okay, having a funky house, that like that's not good. Okay, so we making sure the house smells good. Okay, so when you walk in your house, your living room is the first room in the house that people enter. Unless they enter through some other way. But when people walk into your living room, the smell is the first thing that they notice and the appearance of your living room. If you got clutter, if you got broken things, if you got dirt stains on your wall, clean all that up. That's just that is you. Your house speaks, tells the type of person that you are, woman. Your house explains the type of person that you are. So if you got your kids sleeping on box springs on the floor. And ain't nobody got no bed. Everybody's sleeping on blow-up mattresses and all kind of foolishness. When you could go find some mattresses and put, do something for the kids to get them. Make sure that they got a bed. It's not optional for your kids not to have a bed. But your house speaks about the person that you are. Okay? So when people walk into your house, it should be, it should be clean smelling and clean looking. Not cluttered up. You know what I'm saying? If somebody can stand in your living room and look straight to your kitchen, if they can see into any room in your house, that house should be clean or that door should be closed. Okay? You know, it's totally, it, the, the, the most simplest way I can tell you to make up your bed in the morning is buy a comforter set. Once you, once you straighten out a comforter set on the bed, the bed is fixed and straighten out the pillows. There's nothing that takes two seconds. I fix my bed every day, every day, every day. My bed is fixed. Why do I make up my bed every day? Because I want to get back in my bed, look with my bed looking nice. And if something happens and somebody needs to come in my room, I don't want to be embarrassed. It's a it's embarrassing and it's a shame to come to a woman's house and her house is filthy. It's an embarrassment and a shame. It, it speak it tells people what type of woman you are. So you definitely want to make sure that you keep your house clean. If the if you can see a room from the front door, have that door closed when company's coming over until you can get to it and clean it up. But there's no reason why a woman cannot fix her bed every morning. No excuse. Okay? Every morning. No excuse. And the children too. You have to train your children from the from small You have to talk to them, not cuss at them. You have to teach them how to be clean. And the only way they're going to learn how to be clean is if you clean. And that goes for the boys, too. Everybody should be making their own bed, putting away their clothes and their dishes and different things, and and have responsibilities. That's how you train your children. But you got to do that, okay? So if you, you go in your room and your clothes throwed all over the place, well, I ain't got no dresser, okay? You ain't got no dresser. I got a solution for that. You got a closet? Yeah, I got a closet. So what you do is you go to the to uh, Walmart and you find some of those plastic connectable shelves or you go to Dollar General behind a building and you steal you some of them crates and you build a massive crate closet so you can put your shirts and clothes and all those little cubby holes and get your stuff up off the floor. Do that for your kids. Do that for yourself. I don't care if you got to walk with two crates at a time. Do it. It's creative. And it get, it gets your kids clothes off the floor. If you don't have no dresses. If you don't have no shelves. Figure out something else. You could buy shelves from the from, from Walmart. You could buy them from Target. Find, find ways to, to keep yourself organized. And your house in order. Get Buy bins. You could put socks in bins. You could put underwear and and T-shirts, small little things, personal things, and bins and put them away. There is no reason this day, these days and times for your house to be filthy. No reason. There's every, the dollar, the dollar store, family dollar, dollar general. It's everywhere. You have no reason to be nasty. You can get all your cleaning supplies from, from dollar general or family dollar. You have no reason to be nasty. Everybody should have a place for their clothes. That's how you teach your children order. Everybody's clothes should be folded and put away and look and look decent. I fold everything. I fold all my clothes and I put all my clothes away. And I have to fold my towels, the three. You know, you fold them in half one time and then you fold them in half again and then you fold them in threes. 
Yeah, that's how I do mine. All the towels. And I fold the washcloths. And I roll the socks. And I put the underwear in the underwear drawer and the bras in the bras drawer. Yeah, that organized. And my husband's stuff is the same way. And if he and he doesn't maintain it, I do. For my own mental stability. <laughs> And the same thing with you. You got help. If you got children, you got help folding clothes. I don't have no help folding clothes. I have to fold all mine by myself. Teach your children these things. You shouldn't be stressing out if you have children that can do these things. Because you want them to learn how to be self-sufficient and how to do things. And you need to learn how to do it. Fold your clothes. Put your things away. If If it's broken, if it's too small, if it don't look good, get rid of it. Clean it up. You understand? That's it. If you can't find the other shoe, get rid of it. <laughs> Don't hoarder and hold on to all kind of foolishness. That stuff build up in your house quick. And it ain't and, and that's why people don't want to rent to us because we don't even know how to keep people house clean. Okay, so like I said, you gotta have organization, you gotta make sure your house smells good, and you gotta make sure you keep things off the floor. Because nobody wants to walk into your house and there's shit all over the floor. I mean, come on, papers and this, and, and there's no excuse. You stay on the kids. If the kids' room is a mess, you make sure that they clean their room up every night. You make sure that there's some place for them to put their things. You make sure that if there are things that are broken in their room, that is removed. And you make sure that they have order and they maintain that shit. That's what your job is as the mother. I know you don't know that because if you, you're not home to do it. You, you have to be present in your home to run your home. You are the mother of the house. You are a manager, of a financial advisor, a CEO. Well, you're not the CEO, but you're the COO of your own house. You are supposed to be running that. And it's your responsibility to make sure that your home is clean. Ain't nobody else to do it. Let's move on. So now we go into the most filthiest room of the house. Most of the time. Some of y'all are right. The bathroom. So the bathroom always going to be the filthiest room in the house. If you don't keep it clean, it can go from zero to 100 real quick. Okay? So when you got, when you in the bathroom, the first thing that you need to make sure you do is you just keep you some bleach or whatever cleaning products you like. Keep that. Buy you a spray bottle. Keep it ready handy. So like when the toilet all blowed out from y'all doodling up a storm, you can spray that down, scrub it with the brush freshen it up wipe it down real good make sure you keep the sides of your toilet clean don't let that brown stuff build up on the side of your toilet keep that stuff cleaned up it's disgusting i know buy you some gloves because that's your job unless you got girls and guys to clean up the bathrooms you supposed to make sure your house is clean that stuff ain't supposed to just stay there it's disgusting your hair weaves and all that that stuff you shouldn't have sinks full of hair Hair brushes and combs and stuff scattered all over your mirror and makeup everywhere. You are a filthy woman. And cleanliness is next to godliness. Okay? So I'm I mean I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to be I'm trying to be hella godly over here. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be hella godly. <laughs> that ain't made no sense. <laughs> but I'm you know what I mean. I'm trying to be good. So yeah, I want I want my house to be clean and in order. That's part of me being a woman. That's my swagger. I'm not no nasty woman. My clothes ain't nasty and my home ain't nasty. You can have a drink of water out of my house. Because I'm not going to bring you nothing with no nothing in it. You understand? So people people see that. And if you was not taught that, you need to learn to put that together. But we talk about the bathroom right now. So you make sure that there's no hair all over the floor. You make sure women always make sure that they got to have a bathroom set. You got to have a nice bathroom set and some towels in your bathroom. You should be replacing your washcloths. At least every year or every six months add and making sure that y'all got that y'all got adequate washcloths because washcloths get old, they tear up. You know, some of y'all don't use washcloths to each his own. Just make sure that you got something to wash your ass with real good in the house. Lots of soap, toothpaste. You cannot run out of toothpaste, toilet tissue, and soap in your house. That is unacceptable. You should always make sure that you got plenty of toilet paper in your house. 
And my personal choice is the generic, like the Scots, because it's a hell of a lot. of. If you got them people who like to keep rolling the tissue around their hand, football size tissue, the Scots tissue is thinner, but it's thinner because they're going to roll a whole hell of a lot on their hand anyway. So by the time they make this, this mitt with all my damn tissue, I'm not losing that much because Scots is thin, but they give you more. That's my rationality behind that. And I don't want my toilet all clogged up. Okay, so if you like whatever you like, that's fine. That's just my rationality behind that. And any kind of generics, Scott's type tissue is good for me. Um, Because Family Dollar, not Family Dollar, Walmart got a good brand. And it's like nine. But then I found that you can go to Aldi's. And Aldi's got a good Scott brand for $7. And you get 12 rolls. How can you beat that? You cannot. 12 rolls of toilet tissue at Aldi's for $7? I am with that. You hear me? So... I'll keep, I keeps that in the house. You know what I'm saying? But that's how you got to be. You really don't have extra. If you got extra money just to be tricking up, you should make sure that you got these basic necessities at the house. Definitely. You know, or you need to read, think about what you're doing with your money. Period. I mean, you should have a bomb shelter, <clears throat> backups of tissue, toilet paper. Tissue and toilet paper is the same thing, Miss Nicole. I know I slept. So you should have backups of tissue Toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, soap, shampoo and conditioner, dish detergent, a dishwash, um, dish detergent, laundry detergent. It keeps some bleach because bleach is multi-purpose for all different kinds of things. Um, you want to make sure that you have those things on hand at all times, air fresheners. So you get you a closet and you dedicate that closet to putting up some some personal things for your house because it may the stores may close. Y'all remember the shortage? I taught my sisters keep a I call it we call it our bomb shelter because if anything break off, we always got a few extras piled away. So, you know, if we have to use our bomb shelter stuff, then we can replace it. We got time to replace it when things get better, but we got something if something popping off. You know what I'm saying? Even if you don't just just buy a super a super big Dawn dish detergent, two of them, and just have them aside, that's good because you caught them on sale or whatever. But you always got to put something aside because when something happens, your baby's going to be coming to you like, Mama, we ain't got nothing to eat, and you can't go to the store. But if you already got, if Mama Bear already done set her up a den, she done set her up a little storage for her and her babies. Mama going to be straight because you sometimes you can't run out here to the store and go buy nothing. And that's why you every woman should have a deep freezer in their house with some with some meats in there. I recommend going to the butcher because you get your meats cheap at the butcher. You get your beef. You can get you get your beef cheaper at the butcher shop. But. When it comes to, like, your chicken and everything, you can get your chicken, bags of chicken at Walmart, bags of chicken at Aldi's, you know, and this is better than that. But if you want, like, ground beef, if you want steaks, oxtails, you want uh, beef neck bones, you know, I don't eat pork, but whatever pork you want, they got that at the at the slaughterhouse, at the uh, the neighborhood little spots, the, the, the meat markets. Go there and, and get your meat because they're more wholesale and they're much better than these um, big box stores, Walmart. I don't even try to buy no meats from nothing like that unless I get something that's pre-cooked, processed kind of thing. Like uh, if we want some some kind of, uh, if I get like already chopped chicken breast that I'm going to put on just top a salad off with, I'll already get some made chicken already like that. Like I'll get that from Walmart or maybe some sliced turkey or pastrami. Uh, some turkey pastrami or either some uh, chicken or something like that some lunch meat for us to make sandwiches I'll get that from Walmart but you got to have a stockpile for your kids if you have kids and you ain't got no preparations for them shame on you because I know you get plenty stamps you should be spending every single one of them stamps in that house to if you got to pile the shit on the floor because your kids cannot be without. You need to make sure that you get as many water bottle, water water as much as possible. Whatever snacks and stuff your kids like to hold them down. You might not be able to put all that shit out in front of them because they may run through it. But you put it out. You put you buy it and you have it and you me- and you monitor it and you make sure that the kids understand this is our survival stuff right here, y'all. 
if something happened, y'all seen, you, you, y'all know how the stoves is. You got to talk to your kids like that because it's going to come a time when you're not going to have it and they're going to have to understand that. So you got to start preparing them mentally for hard times. And, and even if you don't ever come upon that, you always got to prepare your kids with the truth. And, and, that, and, and, and having relationships like that with your kids bring y'all closer together. It brings you closer to them. It makes them want to be around you. It makes them want to love you because that's that personal thing. That's that personal relationship you have with them. So they learn you and you learn them. And we will be right back after these messages. All right. And so, yes, we are talking today about how to keep your house clean. And of course, because I'm a plethora of information, I've done flipped it and added more onto it. So I'm also teaching you survival. Your house is your fortress and your your safe place when all hell breaking loose out here in this world. So you have to make sure that your home is set up to care for y'all when things are going wrong. So you should not have you should not be out of things around the house that's vital to y'all survival. Like I said, cases of water, stock up on cleaning, trash bags, uh, toilet paper, toilet tissue, uh, shampoo, conditioner, different the things that you need. Extra asthma medicine. If your kids have asthma, asthma medication. Or you could purchase some herbs that's called mullins. M U L L I E I N S. I believe that's how you spell it. But you can get it on Amazon. Get you some of that. Just the kids could smell it. You could turn it into a tea, and it helps with asthma. It helps with their lung development. So you definitely want to educate yourself, too, about natural remedies that you could use in a time of troubles. All women should have that knowledge to be able to take care of their of their families in the time of crisis. You are the mother bear. You are the mother earth. You should know how to care for your babies and care for yourself and care for your husband because that's what you are there to do as part of being the the mother of the family. You know what I'm saying? So I know we're not going to be able to finish this whole thing, but we're going to keep on pressing. So we 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 stopped in the, uh we stopped on on the storage and getting things. So let's go to the kitchen. All right now, we already said that the bathroom got to stay clean. Keep that toilet cleaned out get you a bathroom set make sure you keep you some nice towels in there fold them up everything neat y'all everything gotta be wiped down keep your if if it's if it's messed up fix it you know they got two brush holders because two brush need holders put your two brushes in holders so that they they ain't all over the place and teach your kids to use them things teach your kids to be in order and, and to have manners and respect that's what you're supposed to do as the mother so now when we get to the kitchen, the kitchen is always a problem because nobody want to wash the dishes, but everybody loves to eat. So the rule of the house is we get some plastic plates and everybody rinse off their own plate when they're done eating. Everybody cleans up behind themselves when they're done eating. Sometimes we might get some paper plates and eat off that. You know, it just depends. It depends on how I'm feeling. Um, but I'm recommending, I'm, I'm speaking to a woman who has family with children. You know, it's hard because I know you don't want to be in the kitchen washing dishes all the time. But that's just part of the process. You got to keep your kitchen clean. My mama always told me that you don't never start cooking in a kitchen that's nasty. Women don't, you have to keep, you got to wash them dishes, have your sink clean, then you start cooking. Everything got to be clean, then you start cooking because you don't want all kind of stuff laying around and you trying to create food that people got to put in their mouth. And in your kitchen, you know, it's always, if you down south, wherever you're from, you may have roaches. So let's deal with the roaches. Now, when you get these these roaches, you are going to have to... You're going to have to put out some bait. First of all, you got to clean up your house. You got to sweep the floor. You got to wipe the table down. You got to wipe the counters down. You got to wash the dishes. You got to take the trash out. The trash got to be taken out every night because anything that you leave for the roaches, they're going to eat. They're going to, they looking for pieces of food everywhere. Okay. They looking for water. Okay. So wherever you got, if you got a leak, keep that area dry. If you got 
trash problems and you got to get rid of that stuff because the roach is looking for it. So make sure you keep your kitchen swept. Now, what you're going to have to do if you got roaches over your house, this is like this is what you do to get rid of the roaches. And you're going to have to invest your money because you can call Orkin and, you know, they'll come and spray their things or whatever. But I, this is what I did. I moved in an old house that the roaches came with the house because the house so damn old, okay? So what I did was I ended up getting some, um, I went and got combat or raid roach house baits, the baits, and the little glue sticky boxes. And I started replacing those regularly, okay? And I also took and bought roach spray the double packs and I put a can in every room in the house where I had roaches so every time I see one I spray them spray them spray them and that's what you do you spray okay I'm sorry if y'all got allergies or whatever but I'm talking to people who just tired of seeing so many damn roaches in their house and want to get rid of them this is what I did okay so after I spray 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 and this went on for months okay because it's always some damn roaches when you live in down south, it's always roaches. Y'all know we live down south. So what I did was I, I just attacked. I got the raid. I'm spraying every time. I got one in my room, one in the bathroom, one in the kitchen, one in the dining room, in the living room. I got one upstairs. I got them everywhere because anywhere, I, everywhere, anywhere I went, I saw a roach. I sprayed them with my spray. So when I finally got them down where I wasn't seeing them as much, the next thing I did was come back with my combat roach things again, and I laid the roach bait out. Now, the roach bait is awesome because what happens is the roaches go in the bait, they eat the bait, and then they take the bait that they ate back to the nest. And once they die, the other roaches eat their body, and they die because the, that roach ate the bait. You see what I'm saying? So that right there... I ain't seen roaches in about a year now. Yes, ma'am. I, and I live in an old house that was built in 1920 down south. And y'all know how hard it is to get rid of roaches out of houses down south. If you don't know, ask somebody. But I got rid of every damn roach that was in my house. I ain't seen a roach in months, y'all. If it is it like, you know, they got the water bugs outside, it'll get under the, under the door or something and maybe come in and I'll kill it. But not one the best thing ever and I, I'm because I'm tired of every time you open up a cabinet it's a roach and now I open my cabinets ain't no roaches I don't I'll be looking to see if I see something and I still got my sprays and I still switch out my baits just to make sure because it's about to get warm I don't want them to manifest and boost back up so I'm putting my baits back out that's what you got to do all right but on that note we're gonna end it here and I will be right back uh, next time with another video thank you guys if you need me queen from creation at gmail.com love you so much talk to you later